New Orleans, Wikipedia article audio. New Orleans e trademark n z e e r e l i e n z slash locally slash e n e e r l e trademark n z slash French La Nouvelle Orla copyright a n s is a major United States port and the largest city and metropolitan area in the state of Louisiana. Names. History. Beginnings. United States Territory Battle of New Orleans Port Slavery and Immigration Civil War Reconstruction Jim Crow Era 20th Century Civil Rights Movement Drainage and Flood Control 21st Century Hurricane Katrina Hurricane Rita Post-disaster recovery Geography Elevation Cityscape Historic and residential architecture Tallest buildings Climate Threat from tropical cyclones Demographics Religion The population of the city was 343,829 as of the 2010 U.S. Census. The New Orleans metropolitan area had a population of 1,167,764 in 2010 and was the 46th largest in the United States. The New Orleans a Euro Materia Euro Bogalusa combined statistical area, a larger trading area, had a 2010 population of 1,452,502. Before Hurricane Katrina, Orleans Parish was the most populous parish in Louisiana. As of 2015, it ranked third trailing neighboring Jefferson Parish and East Baton Rouge Parish. The city of New Orleans is geographically coextensive with Orleans Parish. Ethnic Groups Changes in Population The city is known for its distinct French and Spanish Creole architecture, as well as its cross-cultural and multilingual heritage. New Orleans is famous for its cuisine, music, and its annual celebrations and festivals, most notably Mardi Gras. The city is often referred to as the most unique in the United States. Economy Port 2 New Orleans is located in southeastern Louisiana, and occupies both sides of the Mississippi River. The heart of the city and its French Quarter is on the river's north side. The city and Orleans Parish are coterminous. The city and parish are bounded by the parishes of St. Tammany to the north, St. Bernard to the east, Plaquemines to the south, and Jefferson to the south and west. Lake Pontchartrain, part of which lies within the city limits lies to the north and Lake Bourne lies to the east. The city is named after the Duke of Orleans, who reigned as regent for Louis XV from 1715 to 1723. It has many illustrative nicknames. La Nouvelle Orla copyright ANS was founded in spring of 1718 by the French Mississippi Company under the direction of Jean-Baptiste L. E. Moyne de Bienville, on land inhabited by the Chitimacha. It was named for Philippe II, Duke of Orla copyright ANS, who was regent of the Kingdom of France at the time. His title came from the French city of Orla copyright ANS. The French colony was ceded to the Spanish Empire in the Treaty of Paris. During the American Revolutionary War, New Orleans was an important port for smuggling aid to the rebels, 
transporting military equipment and supplies up the Mississippi River. Bernardo de Gialve y Madrid, Count of Gialve successfully launched a southern campaign against the British from the city in 1779. Nueva Orleans remained under Spanish control until 1803, when it reverted briefly to French rule. Nearly all of the surviving 18th century architecture of the View Cara copyright dates from the Spanish period, notably accepting the old Ursuline convent. Napoleon sold Louisiana to the United States in the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. Thereafter, the city grew rapidly with influxes of Americans, French, Creoles and Africans. Later immigrants were Irish, Germans and Italians. Major commodity crops of sugar and cotton were cultivated with slave labor on nearby large plantations. Thousands of refugees from the 1804 Haitian Revolution, both whites and free people of color, arrived in New Orleans, often accompanied by slaves of African descent. While Governor Claiborne and other officials wanted to keep out additional free black people, the French Creoles wanted to increase the French-speaking population. As more refugees were allowed into the territory of Orleans, Haitian a copyright migra copyright s who had first gone to Cuba also arrived. Many of the white francophones had been deported by officials in Cuba in retaliation for Bonapartist schemes. Nearly 90% of these immigrants settled in New Orleans. The 1,809 migration brought 2,731 whites, 3,102 free persons of African descent, and 3,226 slaves of African descent doubling the city's population. The city became 63% black, a greater proportion than Charleston, South Carolina's 53%. During the final campaign of the War of 1812, the British sent a force of 11,000 in an attempt to capture New Orleans. Despite great challenges, General Andrew Jackson, with support from the U.S. Navy, successfully cobbled together a force of militia from Louisiana and Mississippi, including free men of color, U.S. Army regulars, a large contingent of Tennessee state militia, Kentucky riflemen, Choctaw fighters and local privateers, to decisively defeat the British troops, led by Sir Edward Pakenham, in the Battle of New Orleans on January 8. 1815. The armies had not learned of the Treaty of Ghent that had been signed on December 24, 1814. The fighting in Louisiana had begun in December 1814 and did not end until late January, after the Americans held off the British Navy during a 10-day siege of Fort St. Philob. As a port, New Orleans played a major role during the antebellum era in the Atlantic slave trade. The port handled commodities for export from the interior and imported goods from other countries, which were warehoused and transferred in New Orleans to smaller vessels and distributed along the Mississippi River watershed. The river was filled with steamboats, flatboats, and sailing ships. Despite its role in the slave trade, New Orleans at the time had the largest and most prosperous community of free persons of color in the nation, who were often educated, middle-class property owners. Dwarfing the other cities in the antebellum south, New Orleans had the nation's largest slave market. The market expanded after the U.S. ended the international trade in 1808. Two-thirds of the more than one million slaves brought to the Deep South arrived via forced migration in the domestic slave trade. The money generated by the sale of slaves in the Upper South has been estimated at 15% of the value of the staple crop economy. 
the slaves were collectively valued at half a billion dollars. An ancillary economy grew up around the tradia euro for transportation, housing and clothing, fees, etc., estimated at 13.5% of the price per person, amounting to tens of billions of dollars during the antebellum period, with New Orleans as a prime beneficiary. According to historian Paul Lachance, After the Louisiana Purchase, numerous Anglo-Americans migrated to the city. The population doubled in the 1830s and by 1840, New Orleans had become the nation's wealthiest and the third most populous city. German and Irish immigrants began arriving in the 1840s, working as port laborers. In this period, the state legislature passed more restrictions on manumissions of slaves and virtually ended it in 1852. In the 1850s, white francophones remained an intact and vibrant community. They maintained instruction in French in two of the city's four school districts. In 1860, the city had 13,000 free people of color, the class of free, mostly mixed-race people that expanded during French and Spanish rule. The census recorded 81% as mulatto, a term used to cover all degrees of mixed race. Mostly part of the Francophone group, they constituted the artisan, educated and professional class of African Americans. Most blacks were still enslaved, working at the port, in domestic service, in crafts and mostly on the many large, surrounding sugarcane plantations. After growing by 45% in the 1850s, by 1860, the city had nearly 170,000 people. It had grown in wealth with a per capita income was second in the nation and the highest in the South. The city had a role as the primary commercial gateway for the nation's booming midsection. The port was the nation's third largest in terms of tonnage of imported goods, after Boston and New York, handling 659,000 tons in 1859. As the Creole elite feared, the Civil War changed their world. In 1862, following the occupation by the Navy after the Battle of Forts Jackson and St. Philip, led by Gen. Benjamin F. Butler, a respected state lawyer of the Massachusetts militia, northern forces occupied the city. Later New Orleans residents nicknamed him Beast Butler because of a military order he issued. After his troops had been assaulted and harassed in the streets by southern women, his order warned that future such occurrences would result in his men treating such ladies as those plying their avocation in the streets, implying that they would treat the women like prostitutes. Accounts of this spread widely. He also came to be called Spoon's Butler because of the alleged looting that his troops did while occupying the city. Butler abolished French language instruction in city schools. Statewide measures in 1864 and, after the war, 1868 further strengthened the English-only policy imposed by federal representatives. With the predominance of English speakers, that language had already become dominant in business and government. By the end of the 19th century, French usage had faded. It was also under pressure from Irish, Italian and German immigrants. However, as late as 1902 one-fourth of the population of the city spoke French in ordinary daily intercourse while another two-fourths was able to understand the language perfectly, and as late as 1945, many elderly Creole women spoke no English. The last major French-language newspaper, La Bile de la Nouvelle Orla Copyright ANS, 
ceased publication on December 27, 1923, after 96 years. As the city was captured and occupied early in the war, it was spared the destruction through warfare suffered by many other cities of the American South. The Union Army eventually extended its control north along the Mississippi River and along the coastal areas. As a result, most of the southern portion of Louisiana was originally exempted from the liberating provisions of the 1863 Emancipation Proclamation issued by President Abraham Lincoln. Large numbers of rural ex-slaves and some free people of color from the city volunteered for the first regiments of black troops in the war. Led by Brigadier General Daniel Ullman, of the 78th Regiment of New York State Volunteers Militia, they were known as the Corps d'Afrique. While that name had been used by a militia before the war, that group was composed of free people of color. The new group was made up mostly of former slaves. They were supplemented in the last two years of the war by newly organized United States colored troops, who played an increasingly important part in the war. Violence throughout the South, especially the Memphis riots of 1866 followed by the New Orleans riot in the same year, led Congress to pass the Reconstruction Act and the 14th Amendment, extending the protections of full citizenship to freedmen and free people of color. Louisiana and Texas were put under the authority of the 5th Military District of the United States during Reconstruction. Louisiana was readmitted to the Union in 1868. Its constitution of 1868 granted universal male suffrage and established universal public education. Both blacks and whites were elected to local and state offices. In 1872, Lt. Governor P.B.S. Pinchback, who was of mixed race, succeeded Henry Clay Warmouth for a brief period as Republican governor of Louisiana, becoming the first governor of African descent of an American state. New Orleans operated a racially integrated public school system during this period. Wartime damage to levees and cities along the Mississippi River adversely affected southern crops and trade. The federal government contributed to restoring infrastructure. The nationwide financial recession and panic of 1873 adversely affected businesses and slowed economic recovery. From 1868, elections in Louisiana were marked by violence, as white insurgents tried to suppress black voting and disrupt Republican Party gatherings. Violence continued around elections. The disputed 1,872 gubernatorial election resulted in conflicts that ran for years. The White League, an insurgent paramilitary group that supported the Democratic Party, was organized in 1,874 and operated in the open, violently suppressing the black vote and running off Republican office holders. In 1874, in the Battle of Liberty Place, 5,000 members of the White League fought with city police to take over the state offices for the Democratic candidate for governor, holding them for three days. By 1876, such tactics resulted in the White Democrats, the so-called Redeemers, regaining political control of the state legislature. The federal government gave up and withdrew its troops in 1877, ending Reconstruction. White Democrats passed Jim Crow laws, establishing racial segregation in public facilities. In 1889, the legislature passed a constitutional amendment incorporating a grandfather clause that effectively disfranchised freedmen as well as the propertied people of color manumitted before the war. 
Unable to vote, African Americans could not serve on juries or in local office, and were closed out of formal politics for generations. The South was ruled by a white Democratic Party. Public schools were racially segregated and remained so until 1960. New Orleans' large community of well-educated, often French-speaking free persons of color, who had been free prior to the Civil War, fought against Jim Crow. They organized the Comet à Copyright des Citoyens to work for civil rights. As part of their legal campaign, they recruited one of their own, Homer Plessy, to test whether Louisiana's newly enacted Separate Car Act was constitutional. Plessy boarded a commuter train departing New Orleans for Covington, Louisiana, sat in the car reserved for whites only, and was arrested. The case resulting from this incident, Plessy v. Ferguson, was heard by the U.S. Supreme Court in 1896. The court ruled that separate but equal accommodations were constitutional, effectively upholding Jim Crow measures. In practice, African American public schools and facilities were underfunded across the South. The Supreme Court ruling contributed to this period as the nadir of race relations in the United States. The rate of lynchings of black men was high across the South, as other states also disfranchised blacks and sought to impose Jim Crow. Anti-Italian sentiment in 1891 contributed to the lynchings of 11 Italians, some of whom had been acquitted of the murder of the police chief. Some were shot and killed in the jail where they were detained. It was the largest mass lynching in U.S. history. In July 1900 the city was swept by white mobs rioting after Robert Charles, a young African American, killed a policeman and temporarily escaped. They killed him and an estimated 20 other blacks, seven whites died in the day's long conflict, until a state militia suppressed it. Throughout New Orleans history, until the early 20th century when medical and scientific advances ameliorated the situation, the city suffered repeated epidemics of yellow fever and other tropical and infectious diseases. New Orleans' zenith versus other American cities occurred in the antebellum period. It was the nation's fifth largest city and was significantly larger than all other southern cities. From the mid-19th century onward rapid economic growth shifted to other areas, while New Orleans' relative importance steadily declined. The growth of railways and highways decreased river traffic diverting goods to other transportation corridors and markets. Thousands of the most ambitious people of color left the state in the Great Migration around World War II and after, many for West Coast destinations. From the late 1800s, most censuses recorded New Orleans' decline versus other American cities. By the mid-20th century, New Orleanians recognized that their city was no longer the leading urban area in the South. By 1950, Houston, Dallas, and Atlanta exceeded New Orleans in size, and in 1960 Miami eclipsed New Orleans, even as the latter's population reached its historic peak. As with other older American cities, highway construction and suburban development drew residents from the center city to newer housing outside. The 1970 census recorded the first absolute decline in population since it joined the United States. The New Orleans metropolitan area continued expanding in population, albeit more slowly than other major Sun Belt cities. While the port remained one of the nation's largest, automation and containerization cost many jobs. The city's former role as banker to the south was supplanted by larger peer cities. 
New Orleans economy had always been based more on trade and financial services than on manufacturing, but the city's relatively small manufacturing sector also shrank after World War II. Despite some economic development successes under the administrations of Delesseps Chep Morrison and Victor Vixquero, metropolitan New Orleans' growth rate consistently lagged behind more vigorous cities. During the later years of Morrison's administration, and for the entirety of Shiro's, the city was a center of the civil rights movement. The Southern Christian Leadership Conference was founded there, and lunch counter sit-ins were held in Canal Street department stores. A prominent and violent series of confrontations occurred in 1960 when the city attempted school desegregation, following the Supreme Court ruling in Brown v. Board of Education. When six-year-old Ruby Bridges integrated William France Elementary School in the Ninth Ward, she was the first child of color to attend a previously all-white school in the South. Crescent City alludes to the course of the Lower Mississippi River around and through the city, the Big Easy was possibly a reference by musicians in the early 20th century to the relative ease of finding work there. It may have originated in the Prohibition era, when the city was considered one big speakeasy due to the government's inability to control alcohol sales in open violation of the 18th Amendment, the city that care forgot has been used since at least 1938, and refers to the outwardly easygoing, carefree nature of the residents. Business Tourist and Convention Business other Top Employers Culture and Contemporary Life Tourism Entertainment and Performing Arts Food Dialect Sports National Protected Areas Government Crime Murder Capital Education Colleges and universities Primary and secondary schools Libraries Media Transportation Streetcars Bicycling Buses Roads Airports Rail Ferries Notable people Sister cities Twinnings and partnerships Notes Tulane University, a private, major research university founded in 1834, Loyola University New Orleans, a Jesuit university founded in 1912, University of New Orleans a public, urban research university, Xavier University of Louisiana, the only historically black Catholic university in the United States, Southern University at New Orleans, a public, historically black university in the Southern University system, Dillard University, a private, historically black liberal arts college founded in 1869. Louisiana State University Health Sciences Center, Our Lady of Holy Cross College, a Catholic liberal arts college founded in 1916, Notre Dame Seminary, New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary, Delgado Community College, founded in 1921, William Carey College School of Nursing, Herzing College, New Orleans Culinary Institute. The St. Charles Streetcar Line is the oldest continuously operating streetcar line in America. Each car is a historic landmark. It runs from Canal Street to the other end of St. Charles Avenue, then turns right into South Carrollton Avenue to its terminal at Carrollton and Claiborne, 
the riverfront streetcar line runs parallel to the river from Esplanade Street through the French Quarter to Canal Street to the Convention Center above Julia Street in the Arts District. The Canal Streetcar Line uses the riverfront line tracks from the intersection of Canal Street and Poydras Street, down Canal Street, then branches off and ends at the cemeteries at City Park Avenue, with a spur running from the intersection of Canal and Carrollton Avenue to the entrance of City Park at Esplanade, near the entrance to the New Orleans Museum of Art, the Ramparta Euro ST. Claude Streetcar Line opened on January 28, 2013 as the Loyola UPT line running along Loyola Avenue from New Orleans Union Passenger Terminal to Canal Street, then continuing along Canal Street to the river, and on weekends on the riverfront line tracks to French Market. The French Quarter Rail expansion extended the line from the Loyola Avenue-Canal Street intersection along Rampart Street and St. Claude Avenue to Elysian Fields Avenue. It no longer runs along Canal Street to the river, or on weekends on the riverfront line tracks to French Market. Caracas, Venezuela, Durban, South Africa, Innsbruck Austria, Juan Le Pins, France, Maracaibo, Venezuela, Matsue, Shimani, Japan, Ma Copyright Rida, Yucata N, Mexico, Orla Copyright ANS, France, Point Noir, Republic of the Congo, San Miguel de Tucuma N, Argentina, Tegucigalpa, Honduras. The Civil Rights Movement's success in gaining federal passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965 renewed constitutional rights, including voting for blacks. Together, these resulted in the most far-reaching changes in New Orleans' 20th century history. Though legal and civil equality were re-established by the end of the 1960s, a large gap in income levels and educational attainment persisted between the city's white and African-American communities. As the middle class and wealthier members of both races left the center city, its population's income level dropped, and it became proportionately more African-American. From 1980, the African-American majority elected primarily officials from its own community. They struggled to narrow the gap by creating conditions conducive to the economic uplift of the African-American community. New Orleans became increasingly dependent on tourism as an economic mainstay during the administrations of Sidney Bartholomew and Mark Morial. Relatively low levels of educational attainment, high rates of household poverty, and rising crime threatened the prosperity in the later decades of the century. The negative effects of these socio-economic conditions contrasted with the changes to the economy of the United States, which reflected a post-industrial, knowledge-based paradigm in which mental skills and education were more important to advancement than manual skills. In the 20th century, New Orleans government and business leaders believed they needed to drain and develop outlying areas to provide for the city's expansion. The most ambitious development during this period was a drainage plan devised by engineer and inventor A. Baldwin Wood, designed to break the surrounding swamp's stranglehold on the city's geographic expansion. Until then, Urban development in New Orleans was largely limited to higher ground along the natural river levees and bayous. Wood's pump system allowed the city to drain huge tracts of swamp and marshland and expand into low-lying areas. Over the 20th century, rapid subsidence, both natural and human-induced, resulted in these newly populated areas declining to several feet below sea level. New Orleans was vulnerable to flooding even before the city's footprint departed from the natural high ground near the Mississippi River. 
In the late 20th century, however, scientists and New Orleans residents gradually became aware of the city's increased vulnerability. In 1965, flooding from Hurricane Betsy killed dozens of residents, although the majority of the city remained dry. The rain-induced flood of May 8, 1995, demonstrated the weakness of the pumping system. After that event, measures were undertaken to dramatically upgrade pumping capacity. By the 1980s and 1990s, scientists observed that extensive, rapid, and ongoing erosion of the marshlands and swamps surrounding New Orleans, especially that related to the Mississippi River a Euro Gulf outlet canal, had the unintended result of leaving the city more vulnerable to hurricane-induced catastrophic storm surges than before. New Orleans was catastrophically affected by what Raymond B. Seed called the worst engineering disaster in the world since Chernobyl, when the federal levee system failed during Hurricane Katrina in 2005. By the time the hurricane approached the city at the end of August 2005, most residents had evacuated. As the hurricane passed through the Gulf Coast region, the city's federal flood protection system failed, resulting in the worst civil engineering disaster in American history. Flood walls and levees constructed by the United States Army Corps of Engineers failed below design specifications and 80% of the city flooded. Tens of thousands of residents who had remained were rescued or otherwise made their way to shelters of last resort at the Louisiana Superdome or the New Orleans Morial Convention Center. More than 1,500 people were recorded as having died in Louisiana, most in New Orleans, while others remain unaccounted for. Before Hurricane Katrina, the city called for the first mandatory evacuation in its history, to be followed by another mandatory evacuation three years later with Hurricane Gustav. The city was declared off-limits to residents while efforts to clean up after Hurricane Katrina began. The approach of Hurricane Rita in September 2005 caused repopulation efforts to be postponed and the Lower Ninth Ward was reflooded by Rita's storm surge. Because of the scale of damage, many people resettled permanently outside the area. Federal, state, and local efforts supported recovery and rebuilding in severely damaged neighborhoods. The Census Bureau in July 2006 estimated the population to be 223,000. A subsequent study estimated that 32,000 additional residents had moved to the city as of March 2007, bringing the estimated population to 255,000, approximately 56% of the pre-Katrina population level. Another estimate, based on utility usage from July 2007, estimated the population to be approximately 274,000 or 60% of the pre-Katrina population. These estimates are somewhat smaller to a third estimate, based on mail delivery records, from the Greater New Orleans Community Data Center in June 2007, which indicated that the city had regained approximately two-thirds of its pre-Katrina population. In 2008, the Census Bureau revised its population estimate for the city upward, to 336,644. Most recently, 2010 estimates show that neighborhoods that did not flood are near or greater than 100% of their pre-Katrina populations. Several major tourist events and other forms of revenue for the city have returned. Large conventions returned. College bowl games returned for the 2006A Euro 2007 season. The New Orleans Saints returned that season. The New Orleans Hornets returned to the city for the 2007A Euro 2008 season. 
New Orleans hosted the 2008 NBA All-Star Game. Additionally, the city hosted Super Bowl Slay EI. Major annual events such as Mardi Gras and the Jazz and Heritage Festival were never displaced or cancelled. A new annual festival, the Running of the Bulls New Orleans, was created in 2007. On February 7, 2017, a large EF3 wedge tornado hit parts of the eastern side of the city, damaging homes and other buildings as well as destroying a mobile home park. At least 25 people were left injured by the event. New Orleans is located in the Mississippi River Delta, south of Lake Pontchartrain, on the banks of the Mississippi River, approximately 105 miles upriver from the Gulf of Mexico. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, the city's area is 350 square miles, of which 169 square miles is land and 181 square miles is water. Orleans Parish is the smallest parish by land area in Louisiana. The area along the river is characterized by ridges and hollows. New Orleans was originally settled on the river's natural levees or high ground. After the Flood Control Act of 1965, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers built flood walls and man-made levees around a much larger geographic footprint that included previous marshland and swamp. Over time, pumping of water from marshland allowed for development into lower elevation areas. Today, a large portion of the city is at or below local mean sea level. Evidence suggests that portions of the city may be dropping in elevation due to subsidence being that the motion of the Earth a Euro trademark S surface is shifting downwards relative to sea level. A 2007 study by Tulane and Xavier University suggested that 51% of the contiguous urbanized portions of Orleans, Jefferson, and St. Bernard parishes lie at or above sea level with the more densely populated areas generally on higher ground. The average elevation of the city is currently between 1 foot and 2 feet below sea level, with some portions of the city as high as 20 feet at the base of the river levee in uptown and others as low as 7 feet below sea level in the farthest reaches of eastern New Orleans. A study published by the ASCE Journal of Hydrologic Engineering in 2016, however, stated, The magnitude of subsidence potentially caused by the draining of natural marsh in the New Orleans area and southeast Louisiana is a topic of debate. A study published in Geology in 2006 by an associate professor at Tulane University claims, the study noted, however, that the results did not necessarily apply to the Mississippi River Delta, nor the New Orleans metropolitan area proper. On the other hand, a report by the American Society of Civil Engineers claims that New Orleans is subsiding. In May 2016, NASA published a study which suggested that most areas were, in fact, experiencing subsidence at a highly variable rate which was generally consistent with, but somewhat higher than, previous studies. The Central Business District is located immediately north and west of the Mississippi and was historically called the American Quarter or American Sector. It was developed after the heart of French and Spanish settlement. It includes Lafayette Square. Most streets in this area fan out from a central point. Major streets include Canal Street, Poydras Street, Tulane Avenue, and Loyola Avenue. Canal Street divides the traditional downtown area from the uptown area. Every street crossing Canal Street between the Mississippi River and Rampart Street, which is the northern edge of the French Quarter, has a different name for the uptown and downtown portions. 
for example, St. Charles Avenue, known for its streetcar line, is called Royal Street below Canal Street, though where it traverses the central business district between Canal and Lee Circle, it is properly called St. Charles Street. Elsewhere in the city, Canal Street serves as the dividing point between the south and north portions of various streets. In the local parlance downtown means down river from Canal Street, while uptown means upriver from Canal Street. Downtown neighborhoods include the French Quarter, Trema Copyright, the Seventh Ward, Faubourg Marigny, by Water, and the Lower Ninth Ward. Uptown neighborhoods include the Warehouse District, the Lower Garden District, the Garden District, the Irish Channel, the University District, Carrollton, Gird Town, Fontainebleau, and Broadmoor. However, the Warehouse and the Central Business District are frequently called downtown as a specific region, as in the Downtown Development District. Other major districts within the city include Bayou St. John, Mid City, Gentilly, Lakeview, Lakefront, New Orleans East, and Algiers. New Orleans is world famous for its abundance of architectural styles that reflect the city's multicultural heritage. Though New Orleans possesses numerous structures of national architectural significance, it is equally, if not more, revered for its enormous, largely intact historic built environment. Twenty National Register Historic Districts have been established, and 14 Local Historic Districts aid in preservation. Thirteen of the districts are administered by the New Orleans Historic District Landmarks Commission, while only Euro the French Quarter a Euro is administered by the View Care Commission. Additionally, both the National Park Service, via the National Register of Historic Places, and the HDLC have landmarked individual buildings, many of which lie outside the boundaries of existing historic districts. Housing styles include the shotgun house and the bungalow style. Creole cottages and townhouses, notable for their large courtyards and intricate iron balconies, line the streets of the French Quarter. American townhouses, double gallery houses, and raised center hall cottages are notable. St. Charles Avenue is famed for its large antebellum homes. Its mansions are in various styles, such as Greek Revival, American Colonial, and the Victorian styles of Queen Anne and Italianate architecture. New Orleans is also noted for its large, European-style Catholic cemeteries. For much of its history, New Orleans skyline displayed only low- and mid-rise structures. The soft soils are susceptible to subsidence, and there was doubt about the feasibility of constructing high-rises. Developments in engineering throughout the 20th century eventually made it possible to build sturdy foundations to underlie high-rises. In the 1960s, the World Trade Center New Orleans and Plaza Tower demonstrated skyscrapers' viability. One Shell Square became the city's tallest building in 1972. The oil boom of the 1970s and early 1980s redefined New Orleans skyline with the development of the Poydras Street Corridor. Most are clustered along Canal Street and Poydras Street in the Central Business District. The climate is humid subtropical, with short, generally mild winters and hot, humid summers. Most suburbs and parts of Wards 9 and 15 fall in USDA Plant Hardiness Zone 9A, while the city's other 15 wards are rated 9B in whole. The monthly daily average temperature ranges from 53.4 A degree F in January to 83.3 A degree F in July and August. Officially, 
as measured at New Orleans International Airport, temperature records range from 11 to 102 A degree F on December 23, 1989 and August 22, 1980, respectively. Audubon Park has recorded temperatures ranging from 6A degree F on February 13, 1899 up to 104A degree F on June 24, 2009. Dew points in the summer months are relatively high, ranging from 71.1 to 73.4A degree F. The average precipitation is 62.5 inches annually. The summer months are the wettest, while October is the driest month. Precipitation in winter usually accompanies the passing of a cold front. On average, there are 77 days of 98 degree F and highs, 8.1 days per winter where the high does not exceed 58 degree F, and 8.0 nights with freezing lows annually. It is rare for the temperature to reach 20 or 100 A degree F, with the last occurrence of each being February 5, 1996 and June 26, 2016, respectively. New Orleans experiences snowfall only on rare occasions. A small amount of snow fell during the 2004 Christmas Eve snowstorm and again on Christmas when a combination of rain, sleet and snow fell on the city, leaving some bridges icy. The New Year's Eve 1963 snowstorm affected New Orleans and brought 4.5 inches. Snow fell again on December 22, 1989 when most of the city received 1 a euro 2 inches. The last significant snowfall in New Orleans was on the morning of December 11, 2008. Hurricanes pose a severe threat to the area, and the city is particularly at risk because of its low elevation, because it is surrounded by water from the north, east, and south and because of Louisiana's sinking coast. According to the Federal Emergency Management Agency, New Orleans is the nation's most vulnerable city to hurricanes. Indeed, portions of Greater New Orleans have been flooded by the Grand Isle Hurricane of 1909, the New Orleans Hurricane of 1915, 1947 Fort Lauderdale Hurricane, Hurricane Flossie in 1956, Hurricane Betsy in 1965, Hurricane Georges in 1998, Hurricanes Katrina and Rita in 2005, and Hurricane Gustav in 2008, with the flooding in Betsy being significant and in a few neighborhoods severe, and that in Katrina being disastrous in the majority of the city. In 2005, Storm surge from Hurricane Katrina caused catastrophic failure of the federally designed and built levees, flooding 80% of the city. A report by the American Society of Civil Engineers says that had the levees and flood walls not failed and had the pump stations operated, nearly two-thirds of the deaths would not have occurred. New Orleans has always had to consider the risk of hurricanes but the risks are dramatically greater today due to coastal erosion from human interference. Since the beginning of the 20th century, it has been estimated that Louisiana has lost 2,000 square miles of coast, which once protected New Orleans against storm surge. Following Hurricane Katrina, the Army Corps of Engineers has instituted massive levee repair and hurricane protection measures to protect the city. In 2006, Louisiana voters overwhelmingly adopted an amendment to the state's constitution to dedicate all revenues from offshore drilling to restore Louisiana's eroding coastline. Congress has allocated $7 billion to bolster New Orleans flood protection. 
According to a study by the National Academy of Engineering and the National Research Council, levees and flood walls surrounding New Orleans Sa Euro no matter how large or sturdy a Euro cannot provide absolute protection against overtopping or failure in extreme events. Levees and flood walls should be viewed as a way to reduce risks from hurricanes and storm surges, not as measures that completely eliminate risk. For structures in hazardous areas and residents who do not relocate, the committee recommended major flood-proofing measures a euro such as elevating the first floor of buildings to at least the 100-year flood level. Historical Population Figures According to the 2010 census, 343,829 people and 189,896 households lived in New Orleans. Its racial and ethnic makeup was 60.2% African American, 33.0% White, 2.9% Asian, 0.0% Pacific Islander and 1.7% were people of two or more races. People of Hispanic or Latino origin made up 5.3% of the population, 1.3% is Mexican, 1.3% Honduran, 0.4% Cuban, 0.3% Puerto Rican, and 0.3% Nicaraguan. The last population estimate before Hurricane Katrina was 454,865, as of July 1, 2005. A population analysis released in August 2007 estimated the population to be 273,000. 60% of the pre-Katrina population and an increase of about 50,000 since July 2006. A September 2007 report by the Greater New Orleans Community Data Center, which tracks population based on U.S. Postal Service figures, found that in August 2007, just over 137,000 households received mail. That compares with about 198,000 households in July 2005 representing about 70% of pre-Katrina population. More recently, the Census Bureau revised upward its 2008 population estimate for the city, to 336,644 inhabitants. In 2010, estimates showed that neighborhoods that did not flood were near or even greater than 100% of their pre-Katrina populations. A 2006 study by researchers at Tulane University and the University of California, Berkeley determined that as many as 10,000 to 14,000 undocumented immigrants, many from Mexico, resided in New Orleans. Janet Merguez, President and Chief Executive Officer of the National Council of La Raza, stated that up to 120,000 Hispanic workers lived in New Orleans. In June 2007, one study stated that the Hispanic population had risen from 15,000, pre-Katrina, to over 50,000. As of 2010, 90.31% of residents age 5 and older spoke English at home as a primary language while 4.84% spoke Spanish, 1.87% Vietnamese, and 1.05% spoke French. In total, 9.69% population age 5 and older spoke a mother language other than English. New Orleans' colonial history of French and Spanish settlement generated a strong Roman Catholic tradition. Catholic missions ministered to slaves and free people of color and established schools for them. In addition, many late 19th and early 20th century European immigrants, such as the Irish, some Germans, and Italians were Catholic. Within the Archdiocese, 
35.9% of the population is Roman Catholic. Catholicism is reflected in French and Spanish cultural traditions, including its many parochial schools, street names, architecture, and festivals, including Mardi Gras. New Orleans displays a distinctive variety of Louisiana voodoo, due in part to syncretism with African and Afro-Caribbean Roman Catholic beliefs. The fame of voodoo practitioner Marie Laveau contributed to this, as did New Orleans' Caribbean cultural influences. Although the tourism industry strongly associated voodoo with the city, only a small number of people are serious adherents. Jewish settlers, primarily Sephardim, settled in New Orleans from the early 19th century. Some migrated from the communities established in the colonial years in Charleston, South Carolina, and Savannah, Georgia. The merchant Abraham Cohen Labatt helped found the first Jewish congregation in New Orleans in the 1830s, which became known as the Portuguese Jewish Nefutsot Yehuda Congregation. Ashkenazi Jews from Eastern Europe immigrated in the late 19th and 20th centuries. By the 21st century, 10,000 Jews lived in New Orleans. This number dropped to 7,000 after Hurricane Katrina. New Orleans synagogues lost members, but most reopened in their original locations. The exception was Congregation Beth Israel, the oldest and most prominent Orthodox synagogue in the New Orleans region. Beth Israel's building in Lakeview was destroyed by flooding. After seven years of holding services in temporary quarters, the congregation consecrated a new synagogue on land purchased from the Reform Congregation Gates of Prayer in Metairie. As of 2011 the Hispanic population had grown in the New Orleans area, including in Kenner, Central Metairie, and Terrytown in Jefferson Parish and Eastern New Orleans and Mid-City in New Orleans proper. After Katrina the small Brazilian-American population expanded. Portuguese speakers were the second most numerous group to take English as a second language classes in the Roman Catholic Archdiocese, after Spanish speakers. Many Brazilians worked in skilled trades such as tile and flooring, although fewer worked as day laborers than did Latinos. Many had moved from Brazilian communities in the northeastern United States, Florida, and Georgia. Brazilians settled throughout the metropolitan area. Most were undocumented. In January 2008 the New Orleans Brazilian population had a mid-range estimate of 3,000. By 2008 Brazilians had opened many small churches, shops, and restaurants catering to their community. Beginning in 1960, the population decreased due to factors such as the cycles of oil production and tourism, and as suburbanization increased and jobs migrated to surrounding parishes. This economic and population decline resulted in high levels of poverty in the city, in 1960 it had the fifth highest poverty rate of all U.S. cities, and was almost twice the national average in 2005, at 24.5%. New Orleans experienced an increase in residential segregation from 1900 to 1980, leaving the disproportionately African-American poor in older, low-lying locations. These areas were especially susceptible to flood and storm damage. Katrina displaced 800,000 people, contributing significantly to the decline. African Americans, renters, the elderly, and people with low income were disproportionately affected by Katrina, compared to affluent and white residents. In Katrina's aftermath, city government commissioned groups such as Bring New Orleans Back Commission, the New Orleans Neighborhood Rebuilding Plan, the Unified New Orleans Plan, 
and the Office of Recovery Management to contribute to plans addressing depopulation. Their ideas included shrinking the city's footprint from before the storm, incorporating community voices into development plans, and creating green spaces, some of which incited controversy. From 2010 to 2014 the city grew by 12 percent, adding an average of more than 10,000 new residents each year following the 2010 census. New Orleans operates one of the world's largest and busiest ports and metropolitan New Orleans is a center of maritime industry. The region accounts for a significant portion of the nation's oil refining and petrochemical production, and serves as a white-collar corporate base for onshore and offshore petroleum and natural gas production. New Orleans is also a center for higher learning, with over 50,000 students enrolled in the region's 11 two- and four-year degree-granting institutions. Tulane University a top 50 research university, is located in Uptown. Metropolitan New Orleans is a major regional hub for the healthcare industry and boasts a small, globally competitive manufacturing sector. The center city possesses a rapidly growing, entrepreneurial creative industries sector and is renowned for its cultural tourism. Greater New Orleans INC acts as the first point of contact for regional economic development, coordinating between Louisiana's Department of Economic Development and the various business development agencies. New Orleans began as a strategically located trading entrepreneur and it remains, above all, a crucial transportation hub and distribution center for waterborne commerce. The port is the fifth largest in the United States based on cargo volume and second largest in the state after the port of South Louisiana. It is the twelfth largest in the U.S. based on cargo value. The port of South Louisiana, also located in the New Orleans area, is the world's busiest in terms of bulk tonnage. When combined with Port of New Orleans, it forms the fourth largest port system in volume. Many shipbuilding, shipping, logistics, freight forwarding and commodity brokerage firms either are based in metropolitan New Orleans or maintain a local presence. Examples include Intermarine, Bissot Towboat, Northrop Grumman Ship Systems, Trinity Yachts, Expeditors International, Bowlinger Shipyards, IMTT, International Coffee Corp., Boaso America, Transoceanic Shipping, Transportation Consultants Incorporated, Dupuy Storage and Forwarding and Silicaf. The largest coffee roasting plant in the world, operated by Folgers, is located in New Orleans East. New Orleans is located near to the Gulf of Mexico and its many oil rigs. Louisiana ranks fifth among states in oil production and eighth in reserves. It has two of the four strategic petroleum reserve storage facilities, West Hackberry in Cameron Parish and Bayou Choctaw in DeBerville Parish. The area hosts 17 petroleum refineries, with a combined crude oil distillation capacity of nearly 2.8 million barrels per day, the second highest after Texas. Louisiana's numerous ports include the Louisiana Offshore Oil Port, which is capable of receiving the largest oil tankers. Given the quantity of oil imports, Louisiana is home to many major pipelines, crude oil, product, and liquefied petroleum gas. Several energy companies have regional headquarters in the area including Royal Dutch Shell, ENI, and Chevron. Other energy producers and oil field services companies are headquartered in the city or region, and the sector supports a large professional services base of specialized engineering and design firms, as well as a term office for the federal government's Minerals Management Service.
The city is the home to a single Fortune 500 company, Entergy, a power generation utility and nuclear power plant operations specialist. After Katrina, the city lost its other Fortune 500 company, Freeport McMoran, when it merged its copper and gold exploration unit with an Arizona company and relocated that division to Phoenix. Its McMoran Exploration affiliate remains headquartered in New Orleans. Other companies either headquartered or with significant operations in New Orleans include, Pan American Life Insurance, Pool Corp., Rolls-Royce, New Park Resources, AT&T, TurboSquid, iSeats, IBM, Navtech, Superior Energy Services, Textron Marine and Land Systems, McDermott International, Pellerin Milnor, Lockheed Martin, Imperial Trading, Latram, Harris Entertainment, Stewart Enterprises, Edison Joest Offshore, Zatarains, Waldemar S. Nelson & Co., Whitney National Bank, Capital One, Tidewater Marine, Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, Parsons Brinkerhoff, MWH Global, CH2M Hill, Energy Partners Ltd, The Receivables Exchange, GE Capital and Smoothie King. Tourism is another staple of the city's economy. Perhaps more visible than any other sector, New Orleans' tourist and convention industry is a $5.5 billion industry that accounts for 40% of city tax revenues. In 2004, the hospitality industry employed 85,000 people, making it the city's top economic sector as measured by employment. New Orleans also hosts the World Cultural Economic Forum. The Forum held annually at the New Orleans Morial Convention Center, is directed toward promoting cultural and economic development opportunities through the strategic convening of cultural ambassadors and leaders from around the world. The first WCEF took place in October 2008. Federal agencies and the armed forces operate significant facilities there. The U.S. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals operates at the U.S. Courthouse downtown. NASA's Michoud Rocket Factory is located in New Orleans East and is operated by Lockheed Martin. It is a huge manufacturing facility that produced the external fuel tanks for the space shuttles and is now used for the construction of NASA's space launch system. The rocket factory lies within the enormous New Orleans Regional Business Park, also home to the National Finance Center, operated by the United States Department of Agriculture, and the Crescent Crown Distribution Center. Other large governmental installations include the U.S. Navy's Space and Naval Warfare Systems Command, located within the University of New Orleans Research and Technology Park in Gentilly. Naval Air Station Joint Reserve Base New Orleans, and the headquarters for the Marine Force Reserves in Federal City in Algiers. According to the city's 2008 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, the top employers are New Orleans has many visitor attractions, from the world-renowned French Quarter to St. Charles Avenue, to Magazine Street with its boutique stores and antique shops. According to current travel guides, New Orleans is one of the top 10 most visited cities in the United States. 10.1 million visitors came to New Orleans in 2004. Prior to Katrina, 265 hotels with 38,338 rooms operated in the Greater New Orleans area. In May 2007, that had declined to some 140 hotels and motels with over 31,000 rooms. A 2009 Travel and Leisure Poll of America's Favorite Cities ranked New Orleans first in 10 categories 
the most first place rankings of the 30 cities included. According to the poll, New Orleans was the best U.S. city as a spring break destination and for wild weekends, stylish boutique hotels, cocktail hours, singles-slash-bar scenes, live music-slash-concerts and bands, antique and vintage shops, coffee copyright s-slash-coffee bars, neighborhood restaurants, and people watching. The city ranks second for friendliness gay friendliness, bed and breakfast hotels slash inns, and ethnic food. However, the city placed near the bottom in cleanliness, safety and as a family destination. The French Quarter, which was the colonial era city and is bounded by the Mississippi River, Rampart Street, Canal Street and Esplanade Avenue, contains popular hotels, bars and nightclubs. Notable tourist attractions in the quarter include Bourbon Street, Jackson Square, St. Louis Cathedral, the French Market and Preservation Hall. Also in the French Quarter is the Old New Orleans Mint, a former branch of the United States Mint which now operates as a museum, and the historic New Orleans Collection, a museum and research center housing art and artifacts relating to the history and the Gulf South. Close to the quarter is the Trema Copyright Community, which contains the New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park and the New Orleans African American Museum A Euro a site which is listed on the Louisiana African American Heritage Trail. The Natchez is an authentic steamboat with a calliope that cruises the length of the city twice daily. Unlike most other places in the United States, New Orleans has become widely known for its elegant decay. The city's historic cemeteries and their distinct above-ground tombs are attractions in themselves, the oldest and most famous of which, St. Louis Cemetery greatly resembles Paris-Lachaise Cemetery in Paris. The National World War II Museum offers a multi-building odyssey through the history of the Pacific and European theaters. Nearby, Confederate Memorial Hall, the oldest continually operating museum in Louisiana, contains the second-largest collection of Confederate memorabilia. Art museums include the Contemporary Arts Center, the New Orleans Museum of Art in City Park, and the Ogden Museum of Southern Art. New Orleans is home to the Audubon Nature Institute, and home to gardens which include Long Vu House and Gardens and the New Orleans Botanical Garden. City Park, one of the country's most expansive and visited urban parks, has one of the largest stands of oak trees in the world. Other points of interest can be found in the surrounding areas. Many wetlands are found nearby, including Honey Island Swamp and Barataria Preserve. Chalmette Battlefield and National Cemetery, located just south of the city, is the site of the 1815 Battle of New Orleans. In 2009, New Orleans ranked number 7 on Newsmax magazine's list of the top 25 most uniquely American cities and towns. The piece cited the city's post-Katrina rebuilding effort as well as its efforts to become eco-friendly. The New Orleans area is home to numerous annual celebrations. The most well-known is Carnival, or Mardi Gras. Carnival officially begins on the Feast of the Epiphany, also known as the Twelfth Night. Mardi Gras, the final and grandest day of festivities, is the last Tuesday before the Catholic liturgical season of Lent, which commences on Ash Wednesday. The largest of the city's many music festivals is the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. Commonly referred to simply as Jazz Fest, it is one of the nation's largest music festivals. The festival features a variety of music, including both native Louisiana and international artists. 
along with Jazz Fest, New Orleans Voodoo Experience and the Essence Music Festival are other festivals featuring local and international artists. Other major festivals include Southern Decadence, the French Quarter Festival and the Tennessee Williams New Orleans Literary Festival. In 2002, Louisiana began offering tax incentives for film and television production. This led to a substantial increase in activity and brought the nickname Hollywood South. Films produced in and around New Orleans include Ray, Runaway Jury, The Pelican Brief, Glory Road, All the King's Men, De Copyright JAVU, Last Holiday, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button and Twelve Years a Slave. In 2006, Work began on the Louisiana Film and Television Studio Complex, based in Trema Copyright. Louisiana began to offer similar tax incentives for music and theater productions in 2007, leading many to begin referring to New Orleans as Broadway South. The first theater in New Orleans was the French-language theater de la Rue Saint-Pierre which opened in 1792. The first opera in New Orleans was performed there in 1796. In the 19th century the city was the home of two of America's most important venues for French opera, the THA copyright A Saint Thierry d'Orla copyright ANS and later the French Opera House. Today, Opera is performed by the New Orleans Opera. New Orleans has long been a significant center for music, showcasing its intertwined European, Latin American, and African cultures. The city's unique musical heritage was born in its colonial and early American days from a unique blending of European musical instruments with African rhythms. As the only North American city to have allowed slaves to gather in public and play their native music, New Orleans gave birth to an epical indigenous music, jazz. Soon, brass bands formed, beginning a century-long tradition. The Louis Armstrong Park area, near the French Quarter in Trema Copyright, contains the New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park. The city's music was later significantly influenced by Acadiana, home of Cajun and Zydeco music, and by Delta Blues. New Orleans' unique musical culture is on display in its traditional funerals. A spin on military funerals, New Orleans' traditional funerals feature sad music on the way to the cemetery and happier music on the way back. Until the 1990s, most locals preferred to call these funerals with music, but visitors to the city have long dubbed them jazz funerals. Much later in its musical development, New Orleans was home to a distinctive brand of rhythm and blues that contributed greatly to the growth of rock and roll. An example of the New Orleans sound in the 1960s is the number one U.S. hit Chapel of Love by the Dixie Cups, a song which knocked the Beatles out of the top spot on the Billboard Hot 100. New Orleans became a hotbed for funk music in the 1960s and 1970s, and by the late 1980s, it had developed its own localized variant of hip-hop, called bounce music. While not commercially successful outside of the Deep South, it remained immensely popular in poorer neighborhoods throughout the 1990s. A cousin of Bounce, New Orleans hip-hop achieved commercial success locally and internationally, producing Lil Wayne, Master P, Birdman, Juvenile, Cash Money Records and No Limit Records. Additionally, the popularity of cowpunk, a fast form of southern rock, originated with the help of several local bands, such as The Radiators, Better Than Ezra, Cowboy Mouth, and Dash Rip Rock. Throughout the 1990s, many sludge metal bands started. 
New Orleans heavy metal bands like Ihudigod, Soylent Green, Crowbar, and Down incorporated styles such as hardcore punk, doom metal and southern rock to create an original and heady brew of swampy and aggravated metal that has largely avoided standardization. New Orleans is the southern terminus of the famed Highway 61 made musically famous by Bob Dylan. New Orleans is world famous for its food. The indigenous cuisine is distinctive and influential. New Orleans food combined local creole, haute creole, and New Orleans French cuisines. Local ingredients, French, Spanish, Italian, African, Native American, Cajun, Chinese, and a hint of Cuban traditions combined to produce a truly unique and easily recognizable New Orleans flavor. New Orleans is known for specialties including beignet, square-shaped fried dough that could be called French donuts, and po' boy and Italian muffuletta sandwiches, gulf oysters on the half shell, fried oysters, boiled crawfish and other seafood. A copyright tufa copyright e, jambalaya, gumbo, and other creole dishes, and the Monday favorite of red beans and rice. Another New Orleans specialty is the praline locally slash e p r e l i e n slash, a candy made with brown sugar, granulated sugar, cream, butter, and pecans. The city offers notable street food including the Asian inspired beef yakamane. New Orleans developed a distinctive local dialect that is neither Cajun nor the stereotypical southern accent that is often misportrayed by film and television actors. Like earlier southern Englishes, feature frequent deletion of the pre-consonantal R. This dialect is quite similar to New York City area accents such as Brooklynese, to people unfamiliar with either. No consensus describes how it came to be, but it likely resulted from New Orleans' geographic isolation by water and the fact that the city was a major immigration port throughout the 19th century. As a result, many of the ethnic groups who reside in Brooklyn also reside in New Orleans, such as the Irish, Italians, Germans and a Jewish community. One of the strongest varieties of the New Orleans accent is sometimes identified as the Yat dialect, from the greeting where Yat. This distinctive accent is dying out in the city, but remains strong in the surrounding parishes. Less visibly, various ethnic groups throughout the area have retained distinct language traditions. Although rare, languages still spoken include Cajun, the Creole Louisian spoken by the Creoles and an archaic Louisiana Canarian Spanish dialect spoken by the Ili plus or minus O people and older members of the population. New Orleans professional sports teams include the 2009 Super Bowl XLIV champion New Orleans Saints, the New Orleans Pelicans, and the New Orleans Baby Cakes. It is also home to the Big Easy Roller Girls, an all-female flat-track roller derby team, and the New Orleans Blaze, a women's football team. New Orleans is also home to two NCAA Division I athletic programs, the Tulane Green Wave of the American Athletic Conference and the UNO Privateers of the Southland Conference. The Mercedes Superdome is the home of the Saints the Sugar Bowl, and other prominent events. It has hosted the Super Bowl a record seven times. The Smoothie King Center is the home of the Pelicans, Voodoo, and many events that are not large enough to need the Superdome. New Orleans is also home to the Fairgrounds Race Course, the nation's third oldest thoroughbred track. The city's lakefront arena has also been home to sporting events. Each year New Orleans plays host to the Sugar Bowl, the New Orleans Bowl and the Zurich Classic, a golf tournament on the PGA Tour. In addition, 
it has often hosted major sporting events that have no permanent home, such as the Super Bowl, Arena Bowl, NBA All-Star Game, BCS National Championship Game, and the NCAA Final Four. The Rock A Euro and A Euro trademark Roll Mardi Gras Marathon and the Crescent City Classic are two annual road running events. The city is a political subdivision of the state of Louisiana. It has a mayor-council government, following a home rule charter adopted in 1954, as later amended. The city council consists of seven members, who are elected by district and two at-large council members. The mayor as of 2017 was Mitch Landrew. The Orleans Parish Civil Sheriff's Office serves papers involving lawsuits and provides security for the civil district court and juvenile courts. The criminal sheriff, Marlon Gusman, maintains the parish prison system, provides security for the criminal district court, and provides backup for the New Orleans Police Department on an as-needed basis. An ordinance in 2006 established an Office of Inspector General to review city government activities. The city and the parish of Orleans operate as a merged city parish government. The original city was composed of what are now the 1st through 9th wards. The city of Lafayette was added in 1852 as the 10th and 11th wards. In 1870, Jefferson City, including Faubourg Bolini and much of the Audubon and University areas, was annexed as the 12th, 13th, and 14th wards. Algiers on the west bank of the Mississippi, was also annexed in 1870, becoming the 15th Ward. New Orleans government is largely centralized in the city council and mayor's office, but it maintains earlier systems from when various sections of the city managed their affairs separately. For example, New Orleans had seven elected tax assessors, each with their own staff, representing various districts of the city, rather than one centralized office. A constitutional amendment passed on November 7, 2006 consolidated the seven assessors into one in 2010. The New Orleans government operates both a fire department and the New Orleans Emergency Medical Services. Crime is an ongoing problem. As in comparable U.S. cities, the incidence of homicide and other violent crimes is highly concentrated in certain impoverished neighborhoods. The murder rate for the city has been historically high and consistently among the highest rates nationwide. The first record was broken in 1979 when the city reached 242 homicides. The record would be broken again reaching 250 by 1989 to 345 by end of 1991. 1994 was the year the city was officially named the murder capital of America, hitting a historic peak at 424. The murder count surpassed Gary, Indiana, Washington, D.C., Chicago, Baltimore, and Miami. In 2003 New Orleans's murder rate was nearly eight times the national average and had the highest per capita city homicide rate in the United States with 274 homicides up from the previous year. According to the FBI New Orleans redeemed its status as America's murder capital for the second time since 1994. Although homicides peaked in the early to mid-1990s at 86 murders per 100,000 residents by 2009, despite a 17% decrease in violent crime, the homicide rate remained among the highest in the United States, at between 55 and 64 per 100,000 residents. In 2010, New Orleans was 49.1 per 100,000, and in 2012, 
that number climbed to 53.2. This was the highest rate among cities of 250,000 population or larger. Offenders in New Orleans are almost exclusively black males, 97% were black and 95% were male. The violent crime rate was a key issue in the 2010 mayoral race. In January 2007, several thousand New Orleans residents marched to City Hall for a rally demanding police and city leaders tackle the crime problem. Then Mayor Ray Nagan said he was totally and solely focused on addressing the problem. Later, the city implemented checkpoints during late night hours in problem areas. The murder rate climbed 14% in 2011 to 57.88 per 100,000 rising to number 21 in the world. In 2016, according to annual crime statistics released by the New Orleans Police Department, 176 were murdered. In 2017, New Orleans had the highest rate of gun violence surpassing the larger populated Chicago and Detroit. New Orleans has the highest concentration of colleges and universities in Louisiana. Colleges and universities based within the city New Orleans Public Schools is the city's public school system. Katrina was a watershed moment for the school system. Pre-Katrina, NOPS was one of the area's largest systems. It was also the lowest performing school district in Louisiana. According to researchers Carl L. Bankston and Stephen J. Caldas, only 12 of the 103 public schools within the city limits showed reasonably good performance. Following Hurricane Katrina, the state of Louisiana took over most of the schools within the system. Many of these schools were subsequently granted operating charters giving them administrative independence from the Orleans Parish School Board, the Recovery School District and Slash or the Louisiana Board of Elementary and Secondary Education. At the start of the 2014 school year, all public school students in the NOPS system attended these independent public charter schools, the nation's first to do so. The charter schools made significant and sustained gains in student achievement, led by outside operators such as KIPP, the Algiers Charter School Network, and the Capital One A Euro University of New Orleans Charter School Network. An October 2009 assessment demonstrated continued growth in the academic performance of public schools. Considering the scores of all public schools in New Orleans gives an overall school district performance score of 70.6. This score represents a 24% improvement over an equivalent pre-Katrina metric, when a district score of 56.9 was posted. Notably, this score of 70.6 approaches the score posted in 2009 by the adjacent, suburban Jefferson Parish public school system, though that system's performance score is itself below the state average of 91. One particular change was that parents could choose which school to enroll their children in, rather than attending the school nearest them. Academic and public libraries as well as archives in New Orleans include Monroe Library at Loyola University, Howard Tilton Memorial Library at Tulane University, the Law Library of Louisiana, and the Earl K. Long Library at the University of New Orleans. The New Orleans Public Library operates in 13 locations. The main library includes a Louisiana division that houses city archives and special collections. Other research archives are located at the historic New Orleans Collection and the Old U.S. Mint. An independently operated lending library called Iron Rail Book Collective specializes in radical and hard-to-find books. 
The library contains over 8,000 titles and is open to the public. The Louisiana Historical Association was founded in New Orleans in 1889. It operated first at Howard Memorial Library. A separate memorial hall for it was later added to Howard Library, designed by New Orleans architect Thomas Sully. Historically, the major newspaper in the area was the Times-Picayune. The paper made headlines of its own in 2012 when Owner Advance Publications cut its print schedule to three days each week, instead focusing its efforts on its website, NOLA.com. That action briefly made New Orleans the largest city in the country without a daily newspaper, until the Baton Rouge newspaper The Advocate began a New Orleans edition in September 2012. In June 2013, The Times-Picayune resumed daily printing with a condensed newsstand tabloid edition, nicknamed T.P. Street which is published on the three days each week that its namesake broadsheet edition is not printed. With the resumption of daily print editions from the Times-Picayune and the launch of the New Orleans edition of The Advocate, now the New Orleans Advocate, the city had two daily newspapers for the first time since the afternoon state's item ceased publication on May 31, 1980. In addition to the daily newspapers, Weekly publications include the Louisiana Weekly and Gambit Weekly. Also, in wide circulation is the Clarion Herald, the newspaper of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of New Orleans. Greater New Orleans is the 54th largest designated market area in the U.S., serving 566,960 homes. Major television network affiliates serving the area include WWOZ, the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Station, broadcasts, modern and traditional jazz, blues, rhythm and blues, brass band, gospel, Cajun, Zydeco, Caribbean, Latin, Brazilian, African and bluegrass 24 hours per day. WTUL, is the Tulane University radio station. Its programming includes 20th century classical, reggae, jazz, show tunes, indie rock, electronic music, soul-slash-funk, goth, punk, hip-hop, New Orleans music, opera, folk, hardcore, Americana, country, blues, latin, cheese, techno, local, world, ska, swing and big band, kids shows, and news programming. WTUL is listener supported and non-commercial. The disc jockeys are volunteers, many of them college students. Louisiana's film and television tax credits spurred growth in the television industry although to a lesser degree than in the film industry. Many films and advertisements were set there, along with television programs such as The Real World, New Orleans in 2000, The Real World, Back to New Orleans in 2009 and 2010, and Bad Girls Club, New Orleans in 2011. Two radio stations that were influential in promoting New Orleans-based bands and singers were 50,000 Watt WNOEM and 10,000 Watt WTIX. These two stations competed head-to-head -head from the late 1950s to the late 1970s. New Orleans has four active streetcar lines. The city's streetcars were featured in the Tennessee Williams play, A Streetcar Named Desire. The streetcar line to Desire Street became a bus line in 1948. The city's flat landscape, simple street grid, and mild winters, facilitate bicycle ridership, 
helping to make New Orleans eighth among U.S. cities in its rate of bicycle and pedestrian transportation as of 2010, and sixth in terms of the percentage of bicycling commuters. New Orleans is located at the start of the Mississippi River Trail, a 3,000-mile bicycle path that stretches from the city's Audubon Park to Minnesota. Since Katrina the city has actively sought to promote bicycling by constructing a $1.5 million bike trail from Mid-City to Lake Pontchartrain, and by adding over 37 miles of bicycle lanes to various streets, including St. Charles Avenue. In 2009, Tulane University contributed to these efforts by converting the main street through its uptown campus. McAllister Place, into a pedestrian mall open to bicycle traffic. A 3.1-mile bicycle corridor stretches from the French Quarter to Lakeview, and 14 miles of additional bike lanes on existing streets. New Orleans has been recognized for its abundance of uniquely decorated and uniquely designed bicycles. Public transportation is operated by the New Orleans Regional Transit Authority. Many bus routes connect the city and suburban areas. The RTA lost 200-plus buses in the flood. Some of the replacement buses operate on biodiesel. The Jefferson Parish Department of Transit Administration operates Jefferson Transit, which provides service between the city and its suburbs. New Orleans is served by Interstate 10, Interstate 610, and Interstate 510. I-10 travels east to Euro West through the city as the Pontchartrain Expressway. In New Orleans East it is known as the Eastern Expressway. I-610 provides a direct shortcut for traffic passing through New Orleans via I-10, allowing that traffic to bypass I-10's southward curve. In addition to the interstates, US-90 travels through the city, while US-61 terminates downtown. In addition, US-11 terminates in the eastern portion of the city. New Orleans is home to many bridges, most notably Crescent City Connection is perhaps the most notable. It serves as New Orleans' major bridge across the Mississippi providing a connection between the city's downtown on the East Bank and its West Bank suburbs. Other Mississippi crossings are the Huey P. Long Bridge, carrying US-90 and the Hale-Boggs Memorial Bridge, carrying Interstate 310. The Twin Span Bridge, a five-mile causeway in eastern New Orleans, carries I-10 across Lake Pontchartrain. Also in eastern New Orleans, Interstate 510-LA-47 travels across the Intracoastal Waterway-Mississippi River Gulf Outlet Canal via the Paris Road Bridge, connecting New Orleans East and suburban Chalmette. The Told Lake Pontchartrain Causeway, consisting of two parallel bridges are, at 24 miles long, the longest bridges in the world. Built in the 1950s and 1960s, the bridges connect New Orleans with its suburbs on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain via Metairie. The metropolitan area is served by the Louis Armstrong New Orleans International Airport, located in the suburb of Kenner. Regional airports include the Lakefront Airport, Naval Air Station Joint Reserve Base New Orleans in the suburb of Belle Chasse and Southern Seaplane Airport, also located in Belle Chasse. Southern Seaplane has a 3,200-foot runway for wheeled planes and a 5,000-foot water runway for seaplanes. New Orleans International suffered some damage from Katrina, but as of April 2007, it was the busiest airport in Louisiana and the sixth busiest in the southeast. As of 2017, the airport handled more than 11 million passengers, serving more than 57 destinations.
The airport's international service includes non-stop flights to the United Kingdom, Germany, Canada, Mexico, Honduras, Bahamas, and Dominican Republic. The city is served by Amtrak. The New Orleans Union Passenger Terminal is the Central Rail Depot and is served by the Crescent, operating between New Orleans and New York City, the City of New Orleans, operating between New Orleans and Chicago and the Sunset Limited, operating through New Orleans between Orlando and Los Angeles. Beginning in late August 2005, the Sunset Limited no longer served its official route. Since late October 2005 served only New Orleans to Los Angeles. The obstacles to restoration of the full route have been more managerial and political than physical. With the strategic benefits of both the port and its double-track Mississippi River crossings, the city attracted six of the seven Class I railroads in North America, Union Pacific Railroad, BNSF Railway, Norfolk Southern Railway, Kansas City Southern Railway, CSX Transportation, and Canadian National Railway. The New Orleans Public Belt Railroad provides interchange services between the railroads. New Orleans has had continuous ferry service since 1827, operating three routes as of 2017. The Canal Street Ferry connects downtown New Orleans at the foot of Canal Street with the National Historic Landmark District of Algiers Point across the Mississippi. It services passenger vehicles, bicycles and pedestrians. This same terminal also serves the Canal Street slash Gretna Ferry, connecting Gretna, Louisiana for pedestrians and bicyclists only. A third auto-slash-bicycle-slash-pedestrian connects Chalmette, Louisiana, and Lower Algiers. New Orleans has 11 sister cities.